Heavenly Father, we thank you for another session of question and answer. I am praying that your spirit will lead the way. And your people's questions will be answered. And they also, on their own part, they will do what they ought to do. They will take instruct. They will take to instructions. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. I have a lot of questions here. But I want to read, I will particularly read some. And, and maybe take them together. And I have my reasons for wanting to read them. Because some of the questions are offending. And uh, some of the questions too, they are not expected from people who come to deeper life at all. And yet, these questions emanate from the members of the church. Take this one for instance. If one mistakenly married a woman not born again, and after two or three children, still find it difficult to call with such woman or man and the one has not paid dowry can one separate to get a better partner or how can one continue to endure such difficult situation how can somebody tell me that he mistakenly married and you have the first child, the second child, and then the third child? And now you want to put away that woman so that you can get a better partner. Now wait for a moment. Let me read one or two others. Is it possible for a single sister to be led to someone whose spouse is still alive saying that God showed her that something will happen and that she will become the wife of the man that's serious this question is unexpected. I don't even think an unbeliever will ask that question. Talk less of a Christian. And of deeper life's talk. Now the second part of the question. If it is possible and someone dreams of fat led to a married person, hoping that the wife will die and will marry the man, should that person not and um, pray against a such should that person not pray against all revelation and seek the face of God for a single man one of us to pass a she the help you know me don't all on that I've been on the year when got in the area see the body check on your combat run to see what I bet in the, in the book of Jeremiah chapter 17 Bible tells us in verse 9 that the heart of man is wicked um, is uh, uh, let me read this desperately wicked Jeremiah chapter 17 let me read verse 9 the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So I want to warn people asking questions like this. I want to warn people asking questions like this. To search their heart out. And look at the motive behind the questions they are raising. Because I cannot understand how somebody will expect another person's wife to die so that you can marry her. That is, if our Bible says, 
He that hated his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life to dwell in. So whoever is thinking like that is thinking the murderous thoughts. He needs to purge himself for herself and then pray and ask for forgiveness. I mentioned that the heart of a person is very, very important to God. The reason, the motive behind the questions you are asking and the desires of your heart is very, very important. In 1 Kings chapter 11, if you read in verse 4, the Bible tells us about Solomon that his heart was not right with God. In 2 Chronicles, we read about King Amaziah in chapter 25, verse 2. The Bible says the man did right in the eye in the sight of the Lord, but yet not with a perfect so you now can see that when you do anything with a corrupt mind with an evil heart it brings you to judgment before the almighty God so then let that single person go and pray and get a single brother to marry and then that person said he mistakenly married and you now have three children. And uh, you don't want to continue with the woman. I want to cancel you. You yourself, you have some problems. I want you to pray and overcome your personal problems. And then see your pastor. Who will be able to put you right? Because the, the doctrine that once dowry is not paid, you are free to do away with a woman or a man, that is what we want to hinge on. But that will be wrong if you are doing it with the wrong motive. I pray the Lord will help you. And then somebody also is asking that if you are led to uh, a brother and the brother expects you to be the one to to come to propose but you don't make the proposal and the man now went ahead to marry another person he's asking if he has no if she has no means the best for her life if she will ever get a husband why will you not get a husband god will give you another husband now we have some other questions. We, I have here somebody who alleged that we have a leader in this region who is carrying other women in his car, but will not carry the wife and not carry the children. Any soba he offers a call, any by pay, and he had a little no joy. Oh, my fear, oh, call the beer won't be in me now. So, when you are what here, go just you motor the beer, especially, particularly a single sister. I want to say with all authority within my disposal that that is very wrong. If you have a car, your wife cannot ride in that car. It is another person that you take in the car and you are smiling and you are laughing and you are driving along the road. May the Lord have mercy on you. And I want to tell you that you should desist from that. And you know the teachings of the Lord Jesus. He says, You have heard as it was told them of old that thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, when you look at a woman with, with, with the intention of committing adultery, with a lost, you have done it already. So, if you love carrying other women, 
there is something behind that. And you know God sees into that secret. And he is a perfect judge. And then we hear another person says here that there are husbands who keep full stop in their private room. And they will now measure rice with cup to the wife to cook. Put the oil and other things and Maggi and everything in his own room. I don't know if this is really real. If it is real, ah, that brother, we need to pray for you. Ah, my heart is praying for you right now. Now, maybe the woman is wasteful anyway, I don't know. But if your wife is wasteful, you have married her. Why not train her and tell her what you need? Or you think you suspect that she's going to give the, the full stuff to her relations. I don't know exactly what is wrong in that family. But if that is not the reason, then the man should not be the custodian of the food in the home. So when the man is away, the wife and the children will be hungry. The key to the storehouse is with daddy. And so children until daddy comes back. Let's keep on fasting and praying. It is out of place. It is unthinkable. In fact, it is inconceivable. So, uh, if you are such a woman, in the hand of a man like that, see your pastor. They will pray and they will, with the wisdom of God, address the you in the family. Then this person is asking a question. I want to wave it a little because we have young people here. The husband is trying to sleep with her when she is. Uh, during her period. That is very wrong. In fact, when you see the Old Testament, during the time of issue of blood, the woman is 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 is, uh, uh, is, is said to be unclean. And if I the woman is not even to come to the temple for a number of days. And after a woman has put to bed, the woman also is to stay away from the temple. Because she's unclean for that period. And then again I understand that that time what is coming out of the woman is a dirty thing. And so for a man to desire the woman at that time. I think it is not good enough. It is a filthy practice. So you don't allow it. And then another question. Uh, somebody, well, these, some of these questions have been treated in the different uh, symposia. Now, this person is asking whether it is right to discuss one's past life with his spouse. Uh, I have discovered that when some people are faithful to discuss their past with their with their spouse. There are partners who taunt their wives or husband because of the past. Because of the past life. And because of we even say some bad things because of that past. Forgetting that that person was only faithful to discuss with you the past. So I want to cancel. Carry your pastor along before you discuss a dirty past with your husband. And then we have 
treated you or somebody demanding too much from the spouse. And then a woman who is not ready to say sorry to the husband, even when it is apparent that she's wrong. I think that one, uh, that woman should have repented by now. And then again, the man, the man says, okay. the woman is having concubines outside. I, well, this one cannot be a true Christian. Because if that is happening, I want you to see your woman leader so that that can be addressed. Then somebody asked a question about uh, some converts over demanding. Converts demanding too much. And the person through whom they have come to Christ is being milk dry. I don't think that is Christianity. If you assist a person because there is a need in his or her life, that does not mean you begin to carry the responsibility of that, of that individual. Just made that person to understand. You want to help him or her to get to heaven. That's why you have preached Christ to him or her. And then in this church, what we do is that if we realize that somebody is having a difficulty, that may hinder this person or distract this person from going with, with us in the pilgrimage. We want to assist that person to overcome that problem. The church is not a, a Father Christmas a church. Neither should a person be over dependent. In fact, Bible says, if you will not walk, you should not eat. So if you are lazy, you will not walk, you are not entitled it to food. And then we have some a question came from either a widow or widow, I wouldn't know. This person says they are crying day and night. And they, they don't receive assistance from the church. Let me read Bible here. You see, when you are a widow, and uh, you are expecting assistance from the church, look at what Bible says about it. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, there are categories of widows in the church. There are widows that are referred to as widows indeed. And these are the ones that is above the age of uh, 60, I suppose. Because they cannot remarry. These are widows indeed. Look at what the Bible says. From verse 3. All not widows that are widows indeed. But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home and to requite their parents. For that is good and acceptable before God. Sorry, one more verse. Now, she that is a widow indeed and desolate trusted in God and continued in supplications and prayers night and day. So if there are widows indeed and they are being neglected and they cannot fend for themselves they should understand their responsibility of praying for the church supplicating for believers and the church will take its own uh, Responsibility over them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, I say praise the Lord. Okay, hallelujah.